boy, do we have a treat for you today. Over the last 12 months, we collectively have put on thousands of miles traveling through Ontario, Canada. It has been a blast. The sights, the sounds, the food, the fun, and most of all, the fishing. This province is blessed with approximately 250,000 lakes, and they all have a special story. Here are some of our favorite moments from our adventures into the Canadian wild. There we go, big one, big one. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. Wow, one of my favorite trips from last year. Well, I guess it would have to be the first one out of the gates in the spring. Al and I went up to Branch's Seine River Lodge and went smallmouth fishing, and we had a really, really good time. We are loaded for bear. We got pike stuff, we got musky stuff, we got walleye stuff, we got crappie stuff. And right now, Al and I are gonna go chase smallmouth bass. We're in probably one of the most diverse areas in all of sunset country in Northwest Ontario, the Atacokan region. Hey, we come up here every year. Why? Simple. Lots of water and lots of fish. All kinds of fish. And every year, we pick a couple new lakes that we haven't been on just to explore. We're on one of those bodies of water right now. We're at Branch's Seine River Lodge, obviously, on the Seine River. It's got all kinds of fish in it. And when I called in the other day to talk to, to, to Lori and her husband to find out what's the water temperature, what's the bite looking like, she says, boy, oh boy, we're really catching a lot of smallmouth. My ears perked up like this. I said, smallmouth? You know, we're going to do a television show. You want us to talk a little bit about the smallmouth? She says, oh, please do. There's more interest in smallmouth fishing up here than ever before. I said, it's right up our alley. Put the boat in, Dano. Got him. Boom. Oh. Dano, Dano. You got him on the tube, see? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, nice. Nice fish. Boy, nice fish. Solar powered. Look at that yeah. guy rip. I'm loving it. Loving it, loving it, loving it. You know, that tube, that's one of the baits that smallmouth fishermen got to have all the time. In fact, it's probably the most universal. Uh, producing soft bait for smallmouth all year long. You don't go anywhere, yeah, you know, anywhere without a tube on if you're a smallmouth fisherman. Two favorite baits for me, the most consistent baits probably in a year that I keep on a rod all the time for, for smallmouth, it's a tube and an X wrap. <laughs> Those two baits, if I'm smallmouth fishing any time of the year, they're on. You know, we're learning this lake, like we said this morning, what, you know, we've never been here before. And with all the wood and everything, we're, we're kind of cautious how we're moving around through here, but where Branch is located is perfect for what we're doing. The lodge is sitting in the middle of the lake, basically between two dams. And there's a number of lakes that make up the system with narrows and current between it. A lot of interesting water, but they're sitting in a perfect location you know, where you can go any way you want in the lake. There we go. Got I him. got him. You got a double. double. Oh, yeah, Mine's a goes. pike. Look at that. <laughs> no, mine got a good Look small at this one. Good double, double, double. Look double, at double, double. Whoa. Nice. Look at that. That's Canadian fishing, right? Yeah. Look at Look that. Look at that. Big brown swirlers. Double header. Who's who's got the biggest one? I don't know. Uh, I think I do. I deserve uh, it. Uh, <laughs> Isn't that fun? Boy, that is tough to beat, man. Oh, man. Tough I to gotta beat. get mine in the boat here. Okay. You and get it, yours in. I, I, I gotta come back and check you out. I don't know if yours is bigger or not. I got a feeling I'm gonna acquiesce to him. <clears throat> right. Whoop. Come here, baby. Yeah, his is bigger. You don't even have to pull him. I'm gonna give it to you. Look at that, let me, let me measure up. That's beautiful, man. Oh, you got me. You got by me considered. By a little bit, by a, by a hair. Hey, you want some fantastic fishing? You gotta come up to branches, you know, in sunset country in Northwest Ontario, and you can have days like this.
This segment is brought to you by Northwest Ontario. There's no place like this. So what trip to Canada really sticks out in my mind from last year? Gosh, we did so many cool things up there, but the one that really sticks out has to be the trip that Jim and I did to Peralt Lake at Manitoc Lodge. Manitoc Lodge is only a hop, skip, and a jump across the Canadian border north of Minnesota. Peralt Lake has almost 50 miles of shoreline, and this pristine lodge is located right in the middle. This offers you great accessibility to any part of the lake. And when you're at Manitoc Lodge, it's not what I consider roughing it. The hosts, Steve, Christine, and Jeremiah, they're your friends. The grounds are manicured, the lodge is immaculate, and your accommodations are beautifully maintained log cabins. Manitoc Lodge is what a Canadian fishing experience is about. Let's fish. Got him? I do, yeah. I don't know if it's a pike or a walleye. Let's see, I think it's a big walleye. Oh yeah, big walleye, Jim. Wow. Nice. That's a good one, Jer. Yeah, for sure. Wow. Look at that. Absolutely. There we go. Got him. There you go. Nice. Sweet. That's a good fish. Let's just set him down for a sec here, Jimmy. That's what we're saying is these deep structures, what's so nice about it with your electronics, you can drive around really quickly to find the fish. Don't fish where there are none. Yeah. You know, that's what I mean. You pull up on the spot. We pulled up on it in a minute. Caught him and you can see there's a bunch more down here. Oh, look at that, huh? Awesome Canadian walleye. Man, that's the beauty about coming up here is there's so many quality fish just like that. And like Jim said, you know, we've been just driving around, spending a lot of time looking, not fishing anywhere too long, but more just what does it look like? And looking at the layers, what's the shallow stuff look like? And then these walleyes now are out in that 15 to 25. Boom, jig and wrap, get her back. Oh, nice walleye. See you, dude. You know, when we're initially trying to find fish like this, what you have to do is also is the your fishing technique and actually what we're doing, we use a couple of different like search and destroy techniques, presentations, jigging wrap is one. It's really highly efficient to cover a lot of depth. We each have one rod out. We drive around that deep stuff. Oh, there's one. You just quick throw it out and the fish are going to let you know right away if they're there. It's pretty awesome. And I think this is a really huge walleye. Huge, huge, huge wow, one. Like the size of this, this thing is this enormous. Is big, big, holy mackerel. This That's is just nice. huge. Wow. That net is too small. I got a yeah. bigger one up here. Do you? What? what? Yeah, yeah, I got a bigger net right here for you, buddy. I can get them in this net. No, it'll, it'll flop out. No, you Jer, okay, look at that. We're going. We're out, we're out to three nets. <laughs> we we, go, we got a, a, a little net, fish. a big net, and then the magnum walleye net. The King net. Kong net. I'm really pretty impressed about the Manitac Waldos. Based on what we've been seeing, that that is a holy oh. cow! Wow, and it just popped off. Look at the size of that. Wow, is this serious. thing that, huge? That is a monstrous fish. Look at the size. I'm serious. We got to get a still camera of that. This that thing is huge. huge. This I mean, is, I haven't is caught one like I'm this in kidding. years. I've seen big walleyes. This, this is, is a freaking wow. giant. Yeah, this is one. This is maybe one of my biggest walleyes ever, I'm if not, not my biggest. Here. This might be my biggest walleye that I've ever caught. I'm not yeah, it, it really is. That is wow. huge. That is a huge walleye. Wow. Look at the size of that thing. It's heavy. Big, heavy, giant. How do you like that? Never been to the lake before. Drive around, look at some different layers of habitat. Like our second spot. Catch this. I'd say, I'd say Northwest Ontario and Manitoc Lodge is a good place to fish for walleye. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. What was my favorite trip over the 217 season? Well, that's a tough one because we went on a lot of really cool fishing destinations. I'd have to say it was a trip that Ty Shadeen and I took. On this particular trip, Ty and I are flying into Brace Lake Outfitters in Ontario for an exciting fins and fur excursion. My goal is to get into some hot and heavy walleye and pike action while my buddy Ty is trying to stick a big black bear with a bow. And from what lodge operator Kyle Pulaski tells us, the odds are good that we're going to do both. They've already had one heck of a season.
Grace Lake is one of those remarkable waters where multi-species action comes quick and easy. Many of the pike were in big weed beds, and the walleyes, they're virtually everywhere. And portable electronics cuts the search down quickly. Definitely a fun morning, gorgeous scenery, and a bend in the rod. Boy, look at them right there. I could see a whole bunch of them on the depth finder. That's one thing when you come to these uh, Canadian uh, lakes, you got to really come prepared, you know, and I mean somewhat streamlined, you know, because you just don't have that much room to uh, bring all your gear on the plane. So when you're preparing for walleyes, pike, or bass, you got to be rigged in a way that you can uh, catch a variety of, of different fish, whether they be deep or shallow. Right now I'm actually sort of just popping jigging wraps out in deeper water. We're in 22 foot of water. But when you look over to my right here, I actually have some type of a shallow water presentations, uh, crankbait, a little sh uh, shad dancer. I got a jig presentation, big bite with a uh, VMC moon, moon eye jig that's really efficient for covering uh, uh, shallower water situations. But right now I'm on a little frenzy of a deeper water bite, 22 foot of water off a sunken hump and there's just oodles and oodles of walleyes like this and you can catch them you know a couple of different ways the jigging wrap is just just so efficient i can also catch them on that big bite uh, uh just a vmc and a big bite soft plastic uh, body is a as well we'll catch these fish we'll get her back into the water but i can tell you one thing there's a whole bunch of them down there which is sort of fun it's one thing that's really probably one of the most important pieces of equipment you bring up on a trip like this is a depth finder. This is actually my Helix 5 that I actually use for ice fishing. And I just have a transducer bracket. But the biggest thing, it has a, uh, a zero lines card in it, which what it does, it has a map of every lake in North America. Even that though that this lake does not have a really refined uh, depth contour map what i do have is the perimeter or the 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 shape of this lake which is really critical since i've never been on this body of water this is a pretty pretty big uh, lake system there's like actually three lakes combined together we have brace meta as well as uh era so it's actually a pretty good sized system but I tell you one thing, there are more walleys in this lake than you'd imagine. And just the average size fish is just amazing. I mean, fish after fish like this. Come here, buddy. Okay, we'll give you a quick scoop. There we go. You can see how I had that guy hooked. Really deftly. Just the jig and wrap. Perch colored, yellow perch. One of the hottest bait presentations. But as I was saying, this hummingbird uh, helix, what's really so nice about this is being able to uh, save coordinates. I drive around a big underwater structure like this and I'm just dropping coordinates all the time, all the time wherever I see fish, marking out sort of the shape and the contour of an underwater structure so you know how it's uh, shaped. And that's what's really key to finding fish, you know what I mean? Because most of the time the fish are sitting in pretty uh, specific locations, like right there. There's a whole bunch of them right there. And once you identify where those fish are at, it doesn't take long to get, get bites from them. Oop, oh, that's what I mean, sight fishing like that. See, as soon as I see them, if I hold, held the boat on this spot, I'd get, get a fish just about every drop. Come here, buddy. And I tell you one thing, if you were in the mood for shore lunch, which I sort of am, I'd like to box up a couple of those guys. See, I saw him come up and get it. Let me tell you something about Brace Lake Lodge. It's pretty incredible what Kyle and Terry have done with this place. It's hard to believe, but these two run the whole show from top to bottom and are raising a two-year-old at the same time. I don't think these guys sleep. 
The menu is top notch and it's a big attraction with many of the repeat guests. Absolutely five star from appetizers through dessert. As for the surroundings, it's unspoiled wilderness as far as the eye can see. Absolutely gorgeous. Kyle was right on the money. I caught so many walleyes and pike, my arms were actually sore. And Ty, well, he finally got his trophy black bear. Kyle, for everything you did on this trip, you made it, you made it happen. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. I know what my favorite moment was of the 2017 season. It was a bucket list trip for both James and I, where something ate this. We're going to be on Lac Sewell for five days, chasing walleye, smallmouth, northern pike, and giant muskie. And there's no better way to do it than on a houseboat. We're using Lac Sewell floating lodges, and this is the Cadillac of base camps. The boats are beautiful, immaculate, with plenty of room for all your equipment, and have all the amenities of a cabin that you can take anywhere on the lake. The beauty of a houseboat is you've got all the room and board smack dab and prime fishing grounds wherever they may be. This offers you an experience you just don't get with staying on land. And on a giant body of water like this, it's a sweet way to roll. There we go. Big one. Big one. Big one. Big one. You got a horse on, Jer. You got the right one. Get back here. Whoa, whoa. Keep whoa. your head. Come on. Come on. Come whoa. on. Get the kid out from underneath. Whoa. whoa. Wow. That's a good one. Man. That's a big boy. Yeah, I know. Wow, that's a big fish. Yes, I know. <sighs> Stay on, baby. Yep. Boy, this bucktail has saved my bacon a few times. Okay, wait. The old blue yeah. fox. Okay, come on up here, Jim. Watch yeah. the bag. Watch I'm, the I'm bag. I'm right with you. I'm with you. Oh man, I'm freaking out, dude. Yeah, no, I know. We're gonna get her. It's easy. What? She just went. She was digging in underneath the boat. Come here. No, 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 no. No, no. Yeah, get there. Okay. Okay, here she comes. This is your shot. Jump. Come here. You, I gotta get and, your, and, you and your netting. No, I gotta <laughs> get over where I can get near the fish. Come here. Yes. Yes. <laughs> ah, the Laxul Giant, the dream just happened. I can't believe it. This wow. thing is immense. Why, that's it is bucket. immense. Wow. I know it when you huge. set the hook and I saw her head come up and she says, I got a big one. I looked at it and go, holy it, mackerel. Jim, I mean, when this thing bed, it was like you got those 13 just pulsing. Everything disappeared. Stop, yeah. I pulled back and the rod didn't move. I had that giant 10 footer. Yeah. Oh, nice. All right, let me get my hands. Let me see this thing. Oh. oh. Look at this, huh? An absolute fish of a lifetime. Man, oh man, I can hardly hold it. Oh, this has been a tremendous trip. If you want to experience true wilderness fishing, get on a houseboat, come check out Lac Sewell Floating Lodge is this beautiful fisher with giant muskies, pike, walleyes, and just an absolute beautiful setting. It doesn't get any better. It's You know, I've been in small family run businesses pretty much my entire career. And there's times that business decisions and my faith got a little bit challenged. Is this in line with God's word or can we maybe avoid it? Well, in a current article in Believer's Voice of Victory, uh, I found this interesting, particularly if you're in business or thinking about being in business, just listen up. Here is something worth remembering. Christianity was never meant to be dictated. It was meant to be demonstrated. Your job becomes your pulpit, your performance becomes your platform, and a marketplace becomes your parish. Jesus said it like this, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify, or glorify your Father in heaven. That is why I wrote Faith in the Marketplace. So many believers have seen their Christianity as separate from their job or business, something for only Sunday morning. And many have a difficult time reconciling, reconciling their Christian faith with their desire for profit and business success, 
Let me assure you, the two were never meant to be separated. A great illustration of this is a testimony I read about David M. Brown, the former CEO and president of Lens Crafters, which he also co-founded. While growing up in church, Brown somehow received the belief that faith and business did not mix. He fell into the habit of, apl of applying one ethical system in his personal life and a completely different ethical system at work. But through an intimate encounter with the Lord, Brown became, began to realize that there might be a way to bridge the two worlds after all. Brown bridged those two worlds by bringing the servant leadership model of Jesus to his management at Lens Crafters. After changing his leadership style and eventually the culture of the entire company, the company's phenomenal business success over the next 10 years speaks for itself. Company revenues grew to two billion. The number of company stores grew from 50 to 1,200. The company was considered the most profitable retailer at the time, with close to a 20% profit margin. The last seven years of growth were funded by cash flow and no debt. And the Lens, and Lens Crafter was the first for-profit company to receive the Volunteer Action Award from the White House for its gifts of, of, of site program. I really was blessed by that. Remember, I've been in business all my life. You can be a business person and be successful by doing things in line with God's word. I know a lot of people that are highly successful in business and don't even know God's word. Why is that? because God's word simply has to work. It has to work, his word works. They don't know they're successful because they're implementing things that he said to do if you're a business person, but that is the reason they are successful. His word has to work. And running a business in line with God's word, you will be successful. I can testify that, that for many years of bucking heads, should I or shouldn't I? I had to share that with you. I think you'll be blessed by it. From all of us at the edge, you have a good, safe fishing season. See you on the water.